Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 21st, 2022, around 12.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for multiple tropical cyclones to be forming in the East Pacific over the next couple of weeks. A look at when the tropics will begin to wake up in the Atlantic and severe weather across portions of the South and Northeast United States today. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that it is pretty quiet across the basin currently. We do have some tropical waves that are emerging off the coast of Africa, but none of these are expected to develop, at least for the next five days, as these generally head off towards the west and could bring some impacts to portions of the Western Antilles in terms of heavy rainfall. And then we do have the potential for severe weather today across portions of the southeast U.S. and then also across portions of the northeast U.S., which we'll talk about here in a minute. In the East Pacific Basin, we do have two ongoing active systems. Right now, we have Tropical Depression Estelle, which is now a tropical depression moving off towards the north and west here before kind of bending back towards the southwest. This is not expected to regain any sort of tropical storm status and is basically going to be left to die. And then we have a new system out here across the East Pacific with a 20% chance of development over the next five days as this also heads towards the Northwest. But significant development of this system is looking less and less likely. We still could have one or two additional systems form out here uh, closer to land, but so far there's no indications of anything significant. If we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery this morning, we noticed that again, the overall storm structure today, very disorganized, uh, barely any deep organized convection with this, you know, cloud tops just aren't really that high. And that's to be expected with some very cool stable air over here. And so the storm is moving into this environment and you can see the current National Hurricane Center forecast has this weakening into a post-tropical cyclone later today. And that will be the end of the storm's life. Again, this is expected to kind of dip towards the southwest over the next couple of days, but it's not really expected to gain any appreciable status of becoming a tropical cyclone once again after it dissipates today. And then we'll be watching this disturbance right here, this kind of big disturbance right now that's sitting over the East Pacific. This will be moving northwest over the next few days, but significant development of this system is looking a lot less likely. And we could have another system developing from a complex of storms out here, but this will take some time to get going as it too heads generally towards the west or northwest. So what could we be expecting across the Atlantic Basin for the next several weeks? So let's go ahead and jump straight into that. Taking a look at the GFS forecast, this is the 6 e run valid for 2 a.m. this morning. We'll bring this up to about the current time. We notice that again today, generally speaking, we do have this tropical wave, kind of this big area along the monsoon trough that we've been talking about. So generally, we have westerly winds here in the low levels, and then we have easternlies up here. And that's generally to be expected uh, as we progress forward in time with this kind of monsoon trough pattern. So what this kind of generally indicates is that we have pretty favorable uh, trend for warming in the main development region, but nothing really tries to get going. We do actually see that there is a pretty robust tropical wave that moves off here near the Cabo Verde Islands by about July 27th. Now, this does have the potential to develop, and we'll talk about that here more in a minute in terms of what to expect. But the overall GFS forecast doesn't really call for this to be a major system, though you do notice that in the long term, it does keep a trackable future all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. And while that's not necessarily a set in stone thing, it is starting to get that time where these tropical waves do certainly survive their track, uh, but may not develop. So we'll have to kind of watch that. If we look at the overnight European forecast run, it is pretty similar overall. We actually do have two tropical waves come off and two different futures. And this other system actually dives towards the Southwest towards the Cabo, or really not towards the Cabo Verde Islands, but towards the Lesser Antilly Islands and Trinidad, Tobago, Barbados. Now this is the very long range, so this may not really happen, but this is certainly something interesting. And it goes to show that the Atlantic Basin is starting to kind of ramp up in terms of producing tropical waves. So if we look at the European ensembles and looking at the mean sea level pressure anomaly here, we notice that we are in a period of well below average anomalies. And we really have just this 
big westerly wind event going on across the deep tropics right now that's helping to substantially warm the deep tropics now one of the problems here that we have is notice this big high pressure to the north here this is kind of sitting over the canary islands which are right about here and this canary island chain is also important for feeding the the you know deep tropics with warm air and really that warm water so this is something interesting because if anything it kind of goes to show that we'll see some cooling of the canary current but warming of the deep tropics so let's go ahead and see how this plays out we notice that the pattern is pretty much the same but we remain in a well below average state of pressures throughout the entire forecast period this goes out through about august 5th we notice that generally speaking we end up with well below average pressures at this time if we actually look here, we'll kind of back this up and look at the ensemble mean sea level pressure anomalies here and, and just kind of look if we see any trackable features. Well, there certainly is something here on the European in the long range, maybe developing a tropical cyclone here. So that is certainly quite interesting. This is very long range, but it kind of does go to show that the European does have a little bit more favorability in the Atlantic Basin. So we can kind of look at all this and, and let's look at the precipitation anomalies first of all. So we notice that there's kind of this leagued sacrificial wave that comes off of Africa and it just leaves this big moisture blob ahead of it. And so what this does is that the next wave that follows behind is not the sacrificial lamb, but it's the one that actually has the most potential. We notice that there is a little bit of drying in the mid and upper levels um, as we progress forward, but generally speaking, there is actually a pretty sufficient moist blob here. The problem is going to be, though, that there is still going to be dry air in the environment, and you can kind of just tell that. If we look at the upper level wind here, we notice that generally speaking, it is pretty favorable for development. There is pretty anomalous easterly winds across here, but they quickly kind of reverse, and we notice that we actually do have kind of some westerly winds cutting across the caribbean at this time from an upper level disturbance here so this is going to be a very interesting kind of pattern that we're about to enter into but development chances certainly are non-zero uh with that and uh, the pattern certainly seems like it would be increasingly favorable as we progress throughout the remainder of the forecast period and by august 5th it looks like that the doors are beginning to open for additional development after that time. So we'll have to continue to monitor that. But again, as of at least for the next five days, everything will be quiet. This perfectly lines up with our threat forecast. And so we'll have to just monitor that for the Lesser Antilles and for the Caribbean. Again, the Caribbean this year is under a high risk, a very high risk of seeing a significant tropical cyclone enter. So we'll have to kind of keep that in mind. All right. Shifting gears to look at the overall severe weather potential today, we'll t first take a look here at the satellite. So first of all, we do have a cluster of ongoing thunderstorm uh, systems right now. First of all, we have some severe storms near Atlanta, severe storms near Charlotte, and then severe storms with a severe thunderstorm watch box over here just to the north of New York City. If we actually take a look at the Astro Storm Prediction Center forecast today, you can see there is three discernible slight risk areas. There is one across portions of the deep south, including uh, places like Atlanta, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, all the way back through portions of Jackson, Mississippi, near Shreveport, Louisiana. There's another slight risk from about Charlotte, Raleigh, Virginia Beach, and Richmond. And then we also have a, another slight risk from about Albany, Boston, all the way up through portions of Burlington, Vermont, and Maine where there is a severe thunderstorm watch. The overall tornado probabilities today, none across the deep south, but there is a 2% tornado probability this afternoon and evening across portions of New York, Boston, and the surrounding northeast corridor up through there. The main threats today will be the potential for wind, and then, of course, there is some hail potential, even a marginal risk for severe storms up across portions of the upper Midwest right there. So we can kind of look at what we're dealing with. If we actually take a look at the overall moisture field right now, we can see that there's a pretty deep plethora of moisture being pumped northward into New York and the upper northeast here. Two meter dew point values are up in the upper 70s, which is pretty rare for this area. If we actually take a look at the overall temperature, the overall temperatures in this area, temperatures are well into the 90s at this point and again our dew points coincide nicely we have 70s dew points up in this region 
So what exactly are we going to be looking at? Well, we'll take a look at the HRRR forecast and we'll look at the uh, radar here. And so what we'll really be looking for is, are we going to see any clusters or any significant bouts of severe weather? Well, we kind of move this forward. We notice that we do have a few clusters of storms developing out here. A couple clusters that really pique my eye. Um, maybe even some discrete elements down here towards the north of New York City. So that is certainly something to keep in mind. But this overall looks like it will kind of generally be one of those events where we kind of see these uh, individual like line segments begin. And uh, if we take a look at the overall SRH values, they're not particularly high. Again, SRH values in the zero to three kilometer range, around 100, but they do exceed over 200 across portions of New York and towards Boston. So that's where I think the greatest tornado potential will exist today from that. Um, and again, the overall wind environment, we could see winds uh, that generally peak anywhere between 40 and 60 miles per hour in some of these stronger convective elements. There is certainly some instability, especially towards New York and then of course into Maine where instability values, generally speaking, are around the order of about uh, 1,500 to about uh, 2,000 ml cape. So there's certainly the potential for some severe weather with that. Again, the main threats today are going to be the wind and the potential for a few isolated tornadoes across portions of the north. And across the south, it's mainly going to be those wind and hail potentials as well. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.